welcome. We are back this season to do another 15 best targets of. Yep, uh, summer is right around the corner, so it's time for us to show you our best 15 targets for this season. with the Eagle Nebula, by far one of our favorites. The main reason why this beauty is famous for astrophotographers is the pillars of creation, which are visible inside the eagle. Capturing this is not difficult. We recommend about four hours of total exposure to bring good details. The great globular cluster in Hercules is made up of about 500,000 stars. N13 is visible with the naked eye if you are in a very dark zone away from the light pollution. This is our photo of the cluster, with only one hour of exposure. So it is very easy to get something nice in a little time. M13 has been targeted in November 1974 to send a message to potential extraterrestrial civilizations. The Trifid Nebula and the stars that burn in the gases are probably the youngest of our galaxy. Two red and blue areas show the gas surrounding the birth of new burning stars. Sadly, with an unmodified DSLR, getting the red hydrogen alpha gases is kind of a challenge. M20 is still in our list of the easiest targets to capture though, and you even get the cluster M21 as well in the same frame. M8, the Lagoon Nebula. You can see an open cluster of stars, NGC 6530, in front of this nebula. We only spent two hours on this target, as it is fairly bright and big. Same problem as the previous Messier object, getting the reds is not easy, but it is very nice, even if the blue is dominant. The Omega, or Swan Nebula, is considered one of the brightest and most massive star-forming regions of our galaxy. It is very similar to M42, the famous Orion Nebula, except that it is viewed edge-on rather than face-on. We haven't photographed this target yet, simply because that one doesn't really appeal much to us. But sooner or later, we will add it to our catalog. You can see us capture this target in episode 2 of Galactic Hunter. M57 is super tiny, and also not very impressive, but if you are up for the challenge, Go ahead and capture it. It is bright enough to be on this list even though you should spend about 3 hours imaging it to get proper results. At a distance of about 500 light years only, Ruo Ophiuchi is the closest stellar nursery to Earth, around the high orange star Antares. This target is twice the size of the moon, so let your telescope rest for the night and grab a 50mm lens to capture this colorful cloud complex. Here are two awesome targets in the constellation Cygnus for small telescopes, or simply with a camera lens. The North America and Pelican Nebula are huge. They can be captured in the same frame, and there are lots of details in the gases. The Helix Nebula, or the Eye of God, or even the Eye of Sauron, is one of the closest planetary nebulae from Earth. It is very bright and makes for an awesome target to photograph. It is very similar looking to M57, the Ring Nebula, which you can see us capture in episode 2 of Galactic Hunter. Except that it is much bigger from our point of view. M27 was the first planetary object discovered by Charles Messier in 1764. It is easily visible with binoculars and small telescopes. This photo was taken with only one hour and a half worth of exposures. You can see a bit of the red X striking in the center of the nebula, which is actually pretty difficult to get. This is a very easy target for beginners. M11, the Wild Duck Cluster, got his name because of brighter stars from a triangle, which resembles a flying flock of ducks. It is one of the most compact and richest clusters out there, with 2,900 stars. Make sure your tracking and guiding are perfect for this target, as with any cluster, or you will end up with a blurry mess. The Veil Nebula is a beauty of the night sky. We only spent an hour and a half on this target, and the result is impressive. 
If you look closely, you can see the faint pink and blue nebulosity all over the image, which is also part of the Veil Nebula. You can bring those up more by adding more exposure time to the image. M24, the Sagittarius star cloud, fills a space of a depth of 10,000 to 16,000 light years. It is the most dense concentration of individual stars visible using binoculars, with around 1,000 stars visible within a single field of view. Because of its size, the best way to image this is using your camera lens. The Wizard Nebula is pretty easy to photograph. A DSLR camera will show lots of reds, which doesn't look as beautiful as when using the Hubble palette with a CCD camera. The Crescent Nebula, sometimes called the Eurosign Nebula, is made of a shell, a shock wave moving outward, and a shock wave moving inward. It is a rather faint object, but if you have a UHC or Oxygen 3 filter, you will be able to image it pretty well. All right, well, that's a wrap on this episode. We hope that this has been very insightful for you guys, as we have already chosen some targets in the past, if you want to check out our other episodes, and then some that we're hoping to do in the next episodes. Yep, and if it's been very helpful for you, we'll do another one for the next two seasons. And um, if you want to see most of our targets, go to galactichunter.com. And yep, so we'll see you for episode six. All right, see you.